Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Hey, friends, how you doing? Welcome back to another episode of Hot News. We just want to jump into it after we ask, beg, implore, maybe just kindly gesture that you check out our second channel, Brainus, which you can check out the, the card in the top right hand corner right up there or down in the description. We release videos over there, tech stuff. But then we also have our daily hot news live stream, which we do over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. But we don't just do hot news over there. We got tech meme review, which is actually the video that dropped on Brainus today is the meme review from last week and in case you want to submit tech memes for meme review over on our stream you can check out our subreddit reddit.com forward slash r forward slash uft tech that's a lot of self-promotion i'm sorry let's go ahead and jump into nvidia promotion let's talk about them because i mean what is this channel if not me just talking about all the cool stuff that i really wish i could have but i absolutely can't and we'll talk about that in a second. Anyways, RTX 3080 Ti information being leaked by certain people over on Twitter, obviously. Take this with as much MSG as you possibly can and just make sure your blood cholesterol doesn't go too high because there's no substantiation until Nvidia comes out and says these stuff itself, but RTX 3080, 3080, not the Ti, not the 3090, the 3080 is looking quite delicious, according to the leaks that are coming out, 20% faster than the 2080 Ti, which is not how it's been recently. It's usually the 80 series replaces the previous Ti, and now it looks like this 80 series is not only going to replace the Ti, but absolutely decimate it, which is exactly what we want after having such a subpar generation with the RTX 20 series as far as pure rasterization is concerned. That would be the hopeful goal. This is coming out from Kat Corgi, who has done previous leaks in the past with regards to the RTX 30 series and has been on the money for certain things and still hasn't been confirmed for other things. But the RTX 3080 having a 20% increase over the 2080 Ti does sound impressive. However, it doesn't say explicitly what that is. We assume it's rasterization performance, which would mean that the 3080 would then be 50% better than the 2080 at 4K and 40% better at 1440p, which would be exciting. It would be uh, a new generation that we haven't really gotten from NVIDIA in so many, many moons. I, I mean, the 10 series launched after I started this channel. That's how long it's been going on that we haven't had a good generation, which is crazy to think. I've been doing this for five years at this point. That's insane. Well, looks like the 3080 could potentially be the, the biggest leap of my entire tech YouTube career, which would be phenomenal. What do you think of the 3080 beating out the 2080i by 20%? Sounds realistic to you? Is it too hopeful, not hopeful enough? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. And just for a second, I wanna talk about myself again this isn't self-promotion this is gator promotion go gators yeah because uf and nvidia are teaming up to build a 70 million dollar ai supercomputer here in gainesville florida i'm heckin' excited about this this thing is going to have 700 petaflops of total performance using 1120 nvidia ai 100 tensor core gpus that is an insane setup and i actually learned from this posting that part of the money is coming from a $25 million grant from the co-founder of NVIDIA, not Jensen, but rather Chris Malachowski or Malachowski. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to pronounce it. He went to UF. Great stuff. Co-founder of NVIDIA, got his bachelor's here at UF. Oh yeah. Big thanks to him giving that money. They released a promotional video. I live in like the area over here with all of the trees over there. Oh man. Ah, uh, to be a student, that guy kind of slightly, maybe half looks like me. That's odd, sorry. Uh, Gainesville, love it, UF, love it. But you're gonna need that many petaflops in order to run a monitor like this. LG announcing the world's first 4K, 144 hertz, 27 inch, one millisecond gray to gray response time IPS panel. This is one of their new I nano IPS panels that's gonna have insane color gamut representation. I think it's 98% of the, the DCI-P3 color space, 144 hertz, NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility. It looks like it's gonna cost $800, but it's available right now over on B&H for pre-order. looks like it's launching September 2nd. I couldn't find it on Amazon or Newegg. But this seems to be pretty insane as far as a gaming monitor goes, and we desperately need the 30 series in order to even be able to run this. Because, geez, 4K at 144 hertz—that's gonna—that's mm, 
can't wait to do that. And I can't wait to get my hands on the next gen Ryzen APUs. I've already covered this in a video over on Brainus. So you can check that out right up there. But suffice it to say, we found out that the APU that I've been so desperately desiring to put into my mini PC right here, uh, yeah, it's that's OEM only. They're not shipping it out to retail customers. You're not gonna be able to find it at Amazon or Newegg. For now, AMD says there is the report that they will be doing it at a later time with no specifics of when they're actually gonna do it, which could mean that we get it at the end of this year, we could get it next year, they could launch it with Zen 3. I don't know, really sad, not happening, but AMD once again reaffirming to all you naysayers out there, Zen 3 Ryzen 4000 will be coming out this year. With Rick Bergman, the executive vice president of computing and graphics, saying that Zen 3 client processors are on track to launch this year. So just, if they're coming out, just hold hold your jimmies. And I, I can't hold my jimmies enough for the freaking 4700G. 4, I, I so desperately freaking want it. And they don't even give us a release date for that. It just bothers me. And then we get reports like this. The 4750G can run DDR4-6200 and it can overclock to 5.8 gigahertz on liquid nitrogen. And it can do five gigahertz on non-liquid nitrogen with just some ice. I'm just... Ah, I want these CPUs. Dang it, AMD. You got me. You, you got me by the, the short hairs. I want this so badly. And I kind of want the OnePlus Nord. That got unveiled yesterday with OnePlus doing like an unboxing embargo. But th they said that they weren't allowed to do reviews. But most of the like unboxing videos that I watched gave it like a review. They, they like basically kind of gave their opinion on the phone, even if they didn't show you the pictures or show you the benchmarks. They're kind of like, yeah. Yeah, this is a good price. It's a good spec. Yeah, it's great. So it looks like it's going to come in at 400 euro because it's only going to be available in Europe and India for right now. It comes with a Snapdragon 765G, 90 hertz display, quad cameras, has a ton of good specs. They also launched the OnePlus Buds, which appear to be cheap AirPods for $80 and about the same quality as AirPods. But I mean, you're spending way less than regular AirPods. So the Nord seems to be okay. The OnePlus Buds seems to be okay as far as like budget options. And if you're sad that you can't get it in the U.S., they actually do have a OnePlus Nord beta program for the U.S. and Canada, which is actually open right now, but it's only for 50 people. And they're taking applications starting yesterday. They close on the 28th. 50 reviewers will be announced on August 4th, and then the reviews have to go live by August 31st. I'm not going to be applying to this, but in case you want to be part of their Nord beta program, you can do so at the link in the video description. And uh, Speaking of doing so, Apple has been being carbon neutral for over two years now with them receiving a UN award. Well, now they're committing that by 2030, which is only 10 years from now, holy crap, uh, they are going to be 100% carbon neutral for their entire supply chain, not just themselves. But that's not the only Apple news we have. Their over-ear headphones that we've been waiting on, I think they're supposed to be called Apple Studios, AirPod Studios, something like that. Can't remember, there's a new patent that's coming out that's showing that there's going to not only be gesture control on the outside, like a lot of wireless over-ear headphones have, but also rotation-based sensors so that when you put it down, it likely would pause the music, which is quite neat. This is in addition to other features such as we've heard that they're going to be reversible so that you don't have to make sure you're getting left and right position correct all the time. It'll do it for you just use an algorithms and an algorithm didn't need me to tell you that Quibi sucks okay but this isn't about Quibi this is about NBC's Peacock which launched last week and apparently has hit 1.5 million app downloads in the first six days which do you want to know how many Quibi got in the first six days it was about 1.2 million so Peacock's 25 percent better but guess what I didn't see as much advertising for Peacock as I did for Quibi. No, Quibi was blasting ends all over YouTube, all over basically every website I was visiting. It's all over Twitter. Peacock has kind of been here and there. I haven't seen them do as much. And they also actually have a legitimate content library because, you know, NBC Universal actually makes shows. I just, yeah, launching in a pandemic wasn't the issue, Quibi. Your base premise was, and also your CEO, also your founder, Meg Whitman, what Jeffrey Katzenberg, you guys suck. And that's that's why I failed. You, you're bad at your jobs. You, you had a bad idea of what your company was supposed to do. And that's why you failed. Not not a pandemic. Don't blame it on anybody else because uh, NBC is doing fine. Huh. So that might indicate it's you. But it's not going to be me on Spotify's video podcast because we don't have a podcast. Anyways, Spotify debuting video podcast, you can see a list of podcasts that will be initially available with video formats right now. They're just slowly rolling it out and eventually it'll pick up steam and then 
Joe Rogan's supposed to be going over to them sometime later this year, which will then obviously big the, be the big promotion that they have. But unfortunately, there's some big layoffs happening over at LinkedIn with them announcing that due to the pandemic, as well as some mergers that they're doing within their own corporation, they're going to be laying off nearly 1,000 people. They will get at least 10 weeks of severance pay, as well as 12 months of continuing health insurance. And then uh, they're also allowing them to keep the devices that they were using for their jobs, which is good. That's layoffs are OK. It sucks. 10 weeks of pay allows them to stay afloat. The health insurance is great during the pandemic. Sucks that so many people are losing their job. And gamers are going to lose Rocket League on Steam because Epic Games, uh, Psionics rather, with Epic Games ownership is making the game free to play. But in order to do that, they're taking it away from Steam. So you can get it for free on Epic Games. But if you currently own it on Steam, you're totally going to be fine. You just won't be able to get the free version over on Steam anymore and you won't be able to pay them at all. So free to play Rocket League means that you're just going to be exclusively over on the Epic Games Store and I'm going to be exclusively over on the PlayStation for these Final Fantasy 7 remakes. I'm actually this close to finishing the first part, which I've been playing it for the last three months. I just haven't had a ton of time to play the video games. Anyways, there's an interview that came out with Tetsuya Nomura with regards to the remake part two, saying that yes, it is indeed in full development. They are working as hard as they can to make sure that it comes out as soon as possible and hopefully even better quality than it was before. I'm totally okay with this as long as one, number one, it's not burnout. Number two, uh, they actually come out with a game. I just, I don't trust that it's going to be out anytime soon. Tetsuya Nomura, I don't trust you. I really, I'm enjoying the first part. You did a great job. I'm very excited to play the second part. You got me hyped. I will get it for my PlayStation 5. I will buy a PlayStation 5 exclusively to play the gosh dang game. Just like I bought a PS4 Pro to play Final Fantasy 15 when that launched. I'm, I'm excited. Don't hurt me. Like AMD did. My, my excitement for my Renoir APU in my mobile PC is dead. It's dead. My excitement is dampened, just like this episode of Hot News, because it's over. Episode is done. Don't forget, check out our second channel, Brainus. Post a lot of tech content over there. Don't forget to check out our Twitch streams, subreddit, do all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully, as long as I don't die. Bye.